<clears throat> hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I'm continuing with my series of Batman movie reviews. Oh, shit, I left the DVD case over there. <laughs> but I'm reviewing Batman Forever, like you can see in the title, but I left the, you know, I always like to show the DVD case. Like everybody does here on YouTube, but I forgot it. It's sitting on top of the DVD player right now. But, um, I just want to apologize by the lighting. I'm up here in my room, the lighting is just really... This might work a little bit. Hold on a sec. Is that... Hold on, I'm checking the... That works a little bit better. So hopefully you can actually see me, you know, talking. So I hope that that looks better. Um, I also want to apologize about the timing. I know it is Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving for everybody. Um... I had wanted to get these up yesterday, but because of work and, and just time and stuff like that, I couldn't get them up. But anyway, you know, no need to, you know, feel sorry for myself. Let's just, uh, let's get started, shall we? And Batman Forever is the second sequel, the third movie in the Batman, the original Batman movie franchise. And this is the one where uh, Tim Burton stepped down as a director. He delegated himself to an executive producer role. Michael Keaton decided that, you know, because Warner Brothers was not satisfied with the the um, the backlash that they got from Batman Returns, the parental backlash, that they were just going to decide that this movie, this one, was going to go more in a lighter direction, more of a family-friendly direction. And Michael Keaton was not down for that. Well, that's great. You know, that, that, I think that's wonderful. You know, he wanted the character to still be dark and the movies to be dark. And that's awesome. You know, they actually offered him $15 million to come back, which he turned down. Because he didn't like the way that the, the character was going to be lighter, more lighthearted and stuff like that. And like I said, that's fine. You know, that's cool. But, you know, at this point in time... You know, the, the Batman animated series was on. It, at this point, it was already the adventures of Batman and Robin. The comics, some of the comics had gone in a lighter direction at this point. Uh, the toys, there was a lot of toy sales at this time. This was pretty much the heyday of the the Kenner action figures. You know, a lot of the, the Batman toys because of the animated series and the movies. You know, there was a lot of, the toy sales were very high. So I basically think that Warner Brothers, with this one, wanted to, you know, please, you know, the the parents a little bit more, so they would let the kids, you know, you know, get buy more toys and, you know, watch more of the cartoon, start buying the videotapes that were coming out of the cartoon. I really think that's what their game plan was at this point. So they decided to go in a more lighthearted direction. You know, Joel Schumacher came in as a director. You know, he had directed The Lost Boys, uh, Flatliners, he would go on to direct Hollow Man. He's directed a lot of movies, and he would go on to direct Batman and Robin. And personally, you know, I like his style, you know, I like the uh, the way that he went, you know, with the movie. The, the cinematography is great, I think, as, as in this one. Um, so I think that he did a good job. But, um, like I said... You know, they wanted to go in a more lighthearted direction, but the movie still has its dark moments. I mean, Bruce Wayne gets shot in the head. You know, come on. <laughs> you know, but I know I'm, I'm kind of getting off trail here, but, you know, um, the story of the movie, I'm sorry, I should have started with that, but the story of the movie is Batman is going after Two-Face, who, you know, as we all know, is Harvey Dent, and was once friends with Batman. You know, he helped him on a case, you know, several cases, and, you know, um, Harvey Dent actually got acid poured on him, which caused him, whew, excuse me, to become disfigured and to see, you know, a, a different way of things and become Two-Face, you know, the, the double-sided coin. And, you know, throughout, you know, his, his trailing of Two-Face, uh, there's a guy named Edward Nigma, who works for Bruce Wayne at Wayne Enterprises who just loses it and ends up joining forces with Two-Face as the Riddler. And they come up with this concept to manipulate the minds of all the people in Gotham City, you know, through this brainwave program that he created. And, 
you know, at Robin, or um, I'm sorry, yeah, Bruce Wayne takes Dick Grayson under his wing after he witnessed his uh, family being killed by Two-Face. And Dick Grayson is filled with rage and vengeance and wants to go after Two-Face. And he eventually learns who Bruce Wayne really is, and he fights by his side as Robin. And they end up going to face off against Two-Face and the Riddler um, to save Chase Meridian, who is the psychiatrist who is obsessed with you know, unlocking the mystery behind Batman. And that's basically the plot in a nutshell. I, should, I know I should have started with that, but that's okay. But like I said, you know, they wanted to go more in a lighthearted direction. You know, you had Batman, the original, you know, which was pretty, which was, it's a dark movie. It still has a lot of dark moments in it, but it was great. I mean, it worked well and, you know, the movie paid off at the end and stuff. You know, everything worked perfectly at that. You know, you still had humor and stuff like that. Batman Returns, you know, was more of a darker entry. You know, it got, you know, pretty heavy into, you know, uh, some of the darker elements of, of life. You know, the Penguin, you know, the, the disfigured, you know, uh, man thing that was, you know, tossed away by his parents, which does happen, unfortunately. You know, the Catwoman, this, this woman who was wrongfully, you know, uh, convicted, you know, basically of something... Not necessarily a crime, but she was wrongfully convicted, and she comes back in this dark persona for revenge. And the movie, dark, like I said in the review of that, Batman Returns is a little bit more violent. You know, it gets a little more darker. A lot of the humor, there's still little moments of humor in there, but a lot of the humor was washed away. And personally, once again, you know, Batman Returns is a very underrated movie. You know, it's 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 just as good as the first one, in my opinion. Well, like I said earlier, you know, at this point, you know, Warner Brothers, DC Comics, you know, the powers that be, so to speak, you know, I'm sure it was a, a little bit of both, you know, basically they wanted the Batman franchise to go into a more kid-friendly direction. Like I said, the animated series was already on at this point, you know, and it was already being called The Adventures of Batman and Robin. And, you know, the toy sales were through the roof because of the previous movies and the cartoon and... You know, and some and the comics at this point, you know, at some of the comics, not all of them, were going more in a lighthearted direction. You had the, they had the comic based on the cartoon. You know, I know the, I know the cartoon does have its dark moments, but you know, it's it's Fox Kids. You know, it's aimed more for for kids. You know, so at this point, they really want it to go more in a friendlier direction for kids and parents. You know, Michael Keaton didn't like that, like I said, you know, and he, he walked away, which once again is fine. You know, Tim Burton, you know, had, he had mixed feelings over the first movie, and I guess he just, after the second movie, he just really didn't want to direct another one, or he didn't like the direction. I don't really think Tim Burton's decision has ever really been known. I mean, I've never heard anything about, you know, why he stepped down. But, you know, that's that's personally his opinion. You know, that's that's his that was his choice back in the day. I mean, he still executive produced this one, you know, so he was still working in some capacity on the film, which is great. You know, that's, he's still, you know, working on, on basically his creation, you know, the, the on-screen version of Batman. But, you know, like I said, the movie still has its dark moments. You know, it deals with, you know, Two-Face's, you know, his... his you know, he was deformed, basically. He had acid thrown on him, and his face was deformed, and he becomes this, you know, this multi-personality criminal. You know, some of the stuff that Jim Carrey does is, is really out there, really on the edge, in, a, in, in kind of sort of a funny way, but more in the dark humor kind of way. Like I said earlier, Bruce Wayne gets shot in the head in the movie. You know, you don't see the bullet go in, but you see, you know, him getting shot, which they actually... There was more scenes that were played up to that, but they cut him out of the movie, which I'll get into. Um, you know, Robin's parents die. You basically see them die. You you see them fall. You don't see him go splat like a pancake, but you see the them falling and you see the aftermath. You know, his parents die. You know, people are getting shot. Things are blowing up. The movie's still got a dark edge to it, you know. And I know a lot of people are, are split on this movie. Some people like it. Some people love it, like I do. Some people hate it. You know, I, 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 this movie is really kind of where 
the tide turned on the the opinions of the Batman fans. You know, like I said, some of them, you know, hate the movie. You know, a couple of my friends don't like it. Personally, I love this movie. This is the one that I watched the most growing up. You know, I still have the VHS over on my my VHS uh, shelf over there. Um, personally, you know, I I, I I I have a few problems with the movie, but you know, overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was it was a good sequel. You know, I liked the the performances of the actors, which I'll go into, and and then I liked a lot of the scenes. The soundtrack was good, which I'll get more into in a minute here. But I mean, yeah, I mean the movie, and and it does have that kind of dark atmosphere. A lot of the the locations, the 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 look of the movie is still kind of dark. It's kind of I think they were saying they kind of went for a neo Tokyo look, you know. So some of the the visuals, not maybe maybe not or not maybe the visual effects, you know, but just the visual look of the movie, you know. There's still a lot of that dark elements in that 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 blankness, you know, that, that Batman look, you know, still in the film, you know, so there you go, you know, but the movie does have, you know, it's light, a lot of lighthearted moments, you know, it has, you know, the, the, and, you know, fuck, shit, you know, it does have some lighthearted moments, um, like I said, you know, a lot of the stuff that Jim Carrey's doing in the movie, you know, he is doing that traditional over-the-top slapstick at some points Jim Carrey com- comedy, but like I said, it has a darker edge to it. So it's kind of it's kind of yin and yang, you know, hit and miss. You know, not hit and miss, but it's kind of split. You know, you have the character of Robin who's young, and you know, he he has that darker edge, but there is you know some humor about him, some kind of playfulness about him because he's supposed to be a teenager, but I'm sure Chris O'Donnell was in his mid twenties mid to late 20s, or probably just his mid-20s doing this movie. You know, he's supposed to be this kid, but he really, you know, but anyway. Um, you know, so the movie does have some lighthearted moments, but, you know, it, it still is pretty dark. I mean, so, I mean, I don't understand why people put this one down. You know, it's not dark enough. It's not Batman enough. Well, neither is I'm Batman, but whatever. You know, so I don't understand why some people put it down, but that's just me. Now, like I said, there are some things that bug me. I think some of the the visual effects are over the top. The whole thing where you know Batman shoots that that like batarang and it on the Batmobile and the Batmobile goes up a wall. Okay, I mean even as a kid, I I didn't care for that. I never really have cared for that particular special effect. You know, I just I don't I just don't care for it. You know, I just I didn't think that. It was, you know, it definitely wasn't realistic, you know, in my opinion, but whatever. You know, they, I guess they thought it was good, it was a good movie. And then the whole, you know, that, that scene where, which I'll get into, where they go to the party and they're, and they're trying to set Bruce Wayne up to read his mind and stuff. And then he goes upstairs and then he jumps like, he's in that really tall building, but it's, it's not real, it's a visual effect. But, you know, he jumps like 50 feet, you know, or more. Okay, probably like 120 feet, I'm sorry, into this sewer, like, hole. They built this, like, tube for him to go in. You know, I just thought that hole, that, that was just too over the top. But I like the the beginning sequence with the helicopter crashing into the statue. It's supposed to be the Statue of Liberty. I like that because it was practical, you know. I like the ending with the bat boat and the claw island. I thought that was cool, you know, but just... Those two, sh- those two shots, I just, I just, even as a kid, you know, like I said, even as a kid, I just didn't like, you know, I just, I just never liked those two visual effects shots, and that's just me. If you like it, that's, that's cool, you know, that's awesome, but, you know, I just, me personally, I just, I just don't like them, you know, that's just me. But anyway, but getting into the soundtrack, I want to get into the soundtrack first. I really like the soundtrack, you know, because you have Kiss from a Rose by Seal. You know, everybody remembers that song from this movie. You got Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me from U2, which is a good one in the end credits. Um, there's a song from the Flaming Lips uh, called Bad Days when we go to the Riddler's apartment. That's a good one. Um, yeah, and then I like the uh, the guy who, who did the score for this one in Batman and Robin's name is Elliot Goldenthal. 
he took over for Danny Elfman. I really like his work. I like the theme in this one. You know, I like that his his take on the Batman theme. I, I thought he did a good job with the score. And even Batman and Robin, I like that score as well. You know. Um you know, good soundtrack, you know, and and this movie uh, uses a lot of digital effects, you know, Batman and Batman Returns use a lot more practical effects and, and matte paintings and models and the traditional, you know, practical visual and special effects. This movie, this was, this came out in 1995, which was a big year for visual effects. I mean, come on, the first C completely CGI movie, Toy Story, came out in this, at the this same summer as Batman Forever. Uh, Judge Dredd came out this summer, Apollo 13, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, you know, a lot of visual effects, special effects, you know, digital effects movies. Mortal Kombat came out the same summer, sorry. Um, a lot of those kind of movies came out the same year, and this is really when the, the digital effects, the CGI started to take over at this point. This was the mid-90s, you know, there was a lot more of that kind of stuff, a lot more of those companies, you know, coming out of the woodwork, you know, Pixar obviously was a leader in that with Toy Story, you know, and so on. That's another review for another day. But, you know, they use a lot of, like I was saying, the shot with where Batman jumps, you know, 120 feet and the where the car goes up, you know, the wall. A lot of that, it, it's early computer effects, you know. Um, and, they, you know, they still use models and stuff like that. But, I mean, some of the special effects do look dated, you know, in my opinion, for this time period. Um, you're, you know, not for the time, yeah, for the time period, because you watch it now and it, it does look dated. But, I mean, this is, they were using the best resources possible, you know, at, at this time, you know, but, you know, I, I personally, I'm not a big fan of, of digital effects. I'm not really a huge, huge fan of CGI. Um, I should have included that in my entertainment rant that I did, but I think that kind of deserves its own video, which will be down, you know, the road, you know, my opinion on, on the, the, the digital age of filmmaking, so to speak, you know, because there are some good things and there's some bad things, you know, but that's another video. But yeah, you know, there's a lot of digital effects in this one, you know. But some of it looks good, some of it doesn't look good. And now, you know, it doesn't really look good, you know. But that's, like I said, that was the time period, you know. That's what they had. But in terms of the cast, you know, Val Kilmer took over the role of Batman and Bruce Wayne in this. And I personally, I loved Val Kilmer as Batman and Bruce Wayne. Um... I know a lot of Batman fans complain because you have to use two voices, you know, a Bruce Wayne voice and a Batman voice. But, you know, personally, I don't really care about that. You know, I know that Val Kilmer did, for the Batman segments of the film, you know, he did kind of use a, a, a deeper voice. But his voice is kind of that way already. You know, but I, I really don't care about, you know... The, the 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 voice the, you have to have the Batman voice what where is he yeah that that's a voice all right you know but you know I, I've never really cared about that even growing up I didn't care that Batman talked in in a, two distinctive you know voices for the personas you know some people just get into this shit too much anyway I just like the movies you know and the comics and stuff you know I don't get into it that much I, mean, I get into it but not that much anyway. But I thought Val Kilmer did a good job, or great job, I'm sorry, he did a great job. Bob Kane actually said that Val Kilmer was his favorite of the Batman characters, um, or the actors, I'm sorry, the Batman actors. And, you know, he he definitely has that that aura, that, that, that persona, that quality of, you know, the, the, the mystery about it. He really, he definitely does have that, you know, you're you're not really sure who he is. You know, from a from a Bruce Wayne standpoint, you know he has that that ability to play that duality. You know, the Bruce Wayne and the Batman characters, which is good. You know, I thought once again, yeah, I thought he did a great job. You know, um, him and Joel Schumacher did not did not get along. 
Um, Joel Schumacher said that he was he was very um, he he complained a lot. He said that they would get into arguments and they wouldn't talk for like two days straight. You know, but I don't know. You know that you know. I'm one of those people where if there's a video proving it, if I was there personally, I believe it. But if someone just says something, you know, I don't believe it. You know, that that's just me. I'm not saying I'm not calling anybody a liar. I'm not saying that it didn't happen. I'm just saying that for me, you know, I, I don't believe it. You know, that's just me. You know, and I don't judge people, you know. So, I mean, maybe Val Kilmer was, maybe he wasn't. You know, I'm not going to judge. But, um, basically... I don't know if he just, he did not enjoy playing this character or because basically they said that, you know, Warner Brothers in DC, uh, they kind of fired him after this and then he kind of quit. So it was kind of a, uh, they already knew that they were going to have to find another Batman character or guy to play or damn it, looking for another guy to play Batman for the next movie. So there you go. But I mean... I, I've never heard him talk bad about it in interviews and stuff, you know, but I thought he did a great job, you know. Tommy Lee Jones, you know, plays Two-Face. You know, he did, once again, you know, a great job as well. Uh, I, I remember, you know, Billy D. Williams, like I said in, in my Batman review, played Harvey Dent in that movie because, you know, he was supposed to play Harvey Dent in, you know, or play Two-Face in a future film, but Warner Brothers decided, you know, Warner Brothers, DC Comics, once again, the powers that be, decided to go in a different direction, you know, and not bring back Billy D. Williams. And I know in interviews he said that he would have did a better job and stuff, and you know what, maybe he could have, I don't know, but, you know, it would have been interesting to see that. But, you know, I like Tommy Lee Jones as an actor, you know, he's very capable of playing villains, which he obviously has done uh, in his career, look at Under Siege. You know, he did a great job with the, once again, you know, Two-Face is like Batman. It's that, that duality, you know, it, it's the good side and the bad side. So I think that Tommy Lee did a great job. Uh, once again, Joel Schumacher said that he was, he was very, um, he, he was just kind of, kind of pissy all the time. He said he was just, he, he just kind of had this, this pissy way about him. He was always mad or he was always, you know, like, had an attitude, but I mean, once again, you know, I may have happened, may not have happened, you know. But uh, anyway, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, and Tommy Lee Jones seems like a cool guy, anyway. You know, I don't really see him. Maybe he wasn't in a good mood. Maybe he didn't like doing all the makeup. You know, whatever. But you know, like I said, I'm not gonna nitpick and judge. But um, thought he did a good, good, great job. I'm sorry. And Jim Carrey did a great job, too, as the Riddler. I know Robin Williams really wanted to play the Riddler like he really wanted to play the Joker. But like I said in, you know, the previous review, you know, I just don't think that at that time the executives, the people in charge, the powers that be in Hollywood were ready to take Robin Williams in a serious role, which he did, like, in Insomnia and, and One Hour Photo, that episode on Law & Order that he did. You know, they weren't ready to see Robin Williams play a serious character. They wanted Robin Williams, Mrs. Doubtfire, the funny guy, you know, the genie from Aladdin. You know, that's what they wanted. But, you know, Robin Williams is a very capable actor, you know, and I think that he would have made a great Joker and a great Riddler. But, you know, Jim Carrey at the time was a huge actor. He was he, he had just hit it huge. He did Ace Ventura. And the mask, the year, the two previous years, you know, he was on In Living Color. People knew who he was. You know, he was really, at this point, I think this movie really got him into the A-list, which he's still in. I mean, he's still an A-list actor. You know, he's still getting 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, whatever, million dollars per movie, you know. So this movie, I, I think this one solidified his spot as the 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 A-list go-to comedy guy if you want it to have a hit comedy movie, you know. And I love Jim Carrey. I, I love Ace Ventura, The Mask, a lot of a lot of the film Dumb and Dumber. I love a lot of the movies that he's done. You know, once again, he's a very capable actor. He can also do the serious parts. And like I, in in this one, in this, there are some serious moments. You know, there is those darker 
humor moments, those darker, edgier moments, and he could definitely pull that character off. You know, Edward Nigma is crazy. He's psychotic. He's megalomaniacal. You know, he's just obsessed with, you know, with this this idea of of taking manipulating brain waves and manipulating people through their brain power you know he's 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 crazy like he is in the comics and and the, the cartoon and whatnot you know but i think jim did a great job you know and and joel schumacher speaks very highly of him he said he was a complete gentleman he said he was an absolute blast to work with you know and i i've heard a lot of very good things about jim carrey so i guess you know the sayings are true you know but yeah he doesn't seem like he would be a, a a a bad kind of person but like i said you know this is all just other people talking and that's just basically my own opinion you know on that those kind of people but anyway you know like i was saying earlier about but anyway <laughs> and i think that uh uh damn it chris o'donnell did a great job as robin you know robin is this you know this kid you know who, you know, lost his parents, he lost his brother, his whole family, you know, he grew up around the circus, he, he had this, you know, different, exciting kind of life, and all that was taken away in an instant, you know, he's angry, he's, 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 he's hurt, he's depressed, he's upset, he's pissed off, and he wants to kill Two-Face, you know, he, wa he, has, he has a single goal, he wants to kill Two-Face. And in a lot of ways, that represents the younger, you know, 90s, you know, not the 90s when the, when the comics came out. In this, certainly, but the younger version of Batman. Batman was pissed off that his parents died, but he trained himself, you know, and he became this great, you know, crime fighter. You know, Robin is the opposite. Robin is this reckless kid who just wants to go kill the guy and, and think that'll make it feel better, you know, and... Bruce is trying to teach him, you know, there's a certain way to do it, you know, and he's just, he's, he's very, uh, angst driven. He's very, you know, pissed off about, you know, getting what he wants and it's great. I think Chris O'Donnell did a great job. I think a lot of people, um, at this point, I think that a lot of people started to pay attention to him more. You know, he was in some movies before this. He was in School Ties with Brendan Fraser, which was a, Matt Damon's also in a great movie. You know, he was starting to come into his own at this point. He did Son of a Woman with Al Pacino. You know, he was starting to become, you know, the next big thing. And Batman and Robin, unfortunately, had hurt his career, which I'll talk about more in that movie. But, you know, um... I thought he did a great job, you know, wrapping that up. And then Nicole Kidman, like, you know, I thought she did a good job. You know, she's supposed to be, once again, the love interest, you know, Batman's foil. You know, she's trying to unlock the mysteries behind the mask and stuff like that. You know, and, and they had that with, you know, the previous characters, you know. You know, and I just think at this point, I know a lot of people have, have put this character down and stuff. Some of them have. You know, I just think at this point that it was just too repetitive. You know, Batman falling for a girl, you know, and then they kind of did something different with Batman and Robin, which was nice. But, you know, I just think at this point it was just too run-of-the-mill. It was too expected, you know. Oh, Batman's going to fall in love with this girl, you know. So, it, you know, it was just used as a plot device, I guess. But, I mean, for what she did, she did a good job. And then Michael Gull comes back as Alfred. Once again, a fantastic job. You are sadly missed. Um, you know, Pat Hingle comes back as Commissioner Gordon. You know, great actors. You know, they did a fine job, you know, in their characters. But yeah, you know, overall, I thought the casting decisions were really good. You know, for kind of the uh, uh, going in a different direction for this particular project. You know, so I thought every, you know, everybody did a good job. You know, can't complain. <clears throat> so now I want to get into the scenes. First of all, I like the opening credits sequence with the different colors, and, you know, that was pretty cool. And, you know, this is the, the first Batman film that opens up with the suit-up sequence, you know, and then, can I persuade you to take a sandwich, sir? I'll get drive through I like that. I really do enjoy the, the updated Batmobile in this one. I really did like that. You know, and then, you know, Two-Face is taking over this bank and, you know, 
Chase Meridian. Well, it's the second Gotham Bank. It's on Second Street, and it's the second anniversary. You know, and that, whatever. You know, I, like I said, you know, I really don't didn't care for that. But you know, um, I you know enjoyed the 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 intro to Two Face, and they're shooting up the elevator, and Batman's fighting all the guys, and you know he gets trapped in the vault. You know, and they're hanging the vault from the helicopter, and, you know, Batman saves the guy in the vault, you know, the bank guard, and he goes after Two-Face, and they're fighting on the helicopter. I thought that all that was cool. That was a great introduction to the movie. I thought it was, it was a good way to just kick it off with some good action, you know, some good fight choreography, and some, you know, some good visual effects and stuff like that. So that was cool. Then we're introduced, you know, to Edward Nigma, the Riddler, you know, and... He's telling Bruce about this idea that he has, you know, and he's like, no, it's just too many questions, too many risks. He's like, you were supposed to understand. I'll make you understand. You know, great. He was great. Jim Carrey was great as the Riddler, in my opinion. You know, and then his boss is like, you know, what the hell are you doing? The next scene, you know, what the hell are you doing here? But... You know, and he, he tries his machine out on his boss, and then he kills him. Caffeine will kill ya! You know, like I said, it's funny, but it's those darker, you know, moments of the humor. You know, and then we have the scene where we're in, you know, we go to the Riddler's apartment. Like I said, that song, Bad Days, is playing. You hate your boss at your job. But in your dreams, you can blow his head off. That's a good tune. I got it on my iPod. And then he's making the riddles, you know, and he, he goes and he puts it on Wayne Manor. See ya. You know, it's, 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 come on, it's Jim Carrey. It's that goofball uncle you have. You know, and then we have this scene at the circus, you know, where Two-Face's men take over. And, you know, they're going to, you know, kill, you know, they kill, they're going to try and kill everybody with the bomb, but, you know, they end up killing the Graysons, unfortunately, and, and uh, Dick Grayson's the only one that survives. And then we have the scene at Wayne Manor, you know, um, yeah, I'll save you guys a, you know, a truckload of social services and charities, and I'm all, I'm out of here, you know, I'm, what are you going to do? I'm going to kill Two-Face, you know, and basically... Bruce is trying to coax him into staying and, you know, you know, killing Two-Face won't make the pain go away. You know, it's, it's, he's, he cares for the kid because he's been there, you know what I mean? You know, so he tries to help him out as much as he can, you know, and then he decides to stay, which is good. You know, then, I like that little scene between, uh, Robin and Alfred, you know, Broken Wings men, Robin will fly again. I like that, you know, it's a, it's a nice little scene between them, you know. I enjoyed that, you know, because it's just like that, that, that quiet moment, you know, out of the action and, you know, everything. Um, excuse me, I got congested for a second. Uh, then there's the ambush scene, like I said, where, you know, they do that thing with the car going up the wall, whatever, you know. Then we're introduced to the Riddler, you know, and that's a cool scene, and, you know, they're going on their crime spree, and, you know, and then, you know, Robin steals the car... <laughs> Oh, not yet. I'm sorry. Um, he breaks into the Batcave first. I'm so I got ahead of myself. Yeah, I like that where he, he's like timing everything, and he you know he breaks into the Batcave. Hey, Al. You know he doesn't say it, but he's just like hey, you know. And then I'm sorry. Then you know the other car. You know I like that one where you know come on, ladies, you want to ride in my love machine? <laughs> you know. I like that, and then he actually, you know, fights the, the Glow Gang, and the gang leader is actually Don the Dragon Wilson, which is really cool. I like that, and then they actually, I think they dubbed his voice to make it sound, you know, more sinister or whatever, but that, yeah, that's Don the Dragon Wilson as the gang leader, which is cool, and then, you know, there's that scene in the Batcave, you know, I felt, I felt great, you know, I felt like I had all this power, and, you know, he's like, I'm a part of this, Bruce, whether you like it or not, you know, he's trying to... He's trying to get into it, you know what I mean? He's trying to, um, you know, but, you know, Bruce is like, no, you know, you know, you can't, this is not you, this is me, this is my crusade, you know, and, and they're basically, they're butting heads, but kind of in a, in, a, in a quieter, simpler way, you know, 
And I think at that moment, Bruce realizes, like, I think Alfred says it. He's like, you know, sometimes, you know, you can't, you can't do this alone and everything, you know. And then we have the, uh, the, the scene where, you know, Edward Nygma's having the party and, you know, Bruce is there with, you know, Nicole Kidman and, you know, they're showing off the program and they're trying to get him to go in and read his thoughts and, you know, Two-Face crashes the party and, you know, I like that, I really like that shot when Batman comes through the ceiling. I thought that was cool when there's that fight, you know, and then, like I said, you know, then he jumps 120 feet or I don't know, you know, I'm just spitballing figures, but that's, you know, that shot and then he's in the, like the, I guess like it's a tunnel or whatever and Two-Face is trying to blow it up and he has that, you know, like, he like cocoons his like suit to protect him. I don't know what term you would use. But then, you know, he blows it up and Batman, you think, is trapped. And then Robin comes out of nowhere, you know. And I, and that was cool. I like that scene a lot. And then, you know, he's like, what the hell are you doing here? He's like, you know, Bruce, you know, Batboy, Nightwing, Robin, whatever you want to call me. You know, that's what he's telling him. He's like, no. He's like, you're going to college and you're going to education. And then once again, Alfred's like, you know, the boy is a point. You know, sometimes you can't do it all alone. And, you know, it's good stuff. Um... Then they they find out, you know, uh, Two Face and the Riddler find out who uh, Bruce Wayne really is. Then there's that scene where, you know, I'm not Batman anymore. Batman's done. You know, excuse me, I had to belch. So then Robin leaves. You know, he gets pissed off and he leaves. Then there's the twinkle tweet. You know, the scene where you know they take over Wayne Manor. They blow up the Bat Cave. You know, they, they shoot Bruce Wayne in the head, you know, they kidnap uh, um, Nicole Kidman's character. And then, um, I like that where they're at the Claw Island, and the Riddler's got that jacket on, it's like lighting up. He's like, yeah, I use this when I go jogging. And I don't know if you guys remember, but there used to be an infomercial on. This guy had this book about how to make money, you know, one of those cheesy infomercials, and he wore a jacket that looked like it, so when I was younger, I thought it was the Riddler, and I don't know, little kid stuff, <laughs> but anyway, and then, you know, Batman comes to, and he figures out all the riddles that, you know, Edward Nigma, I, nip, dop, dop, Edward Nigma has been leaving for him, you know, and he finds out the mystery, it's Edward Nigma, you know, the Riddler, and then, you know, I like that sonar bat suit that he wears at the end. I thought that was cool. And I thought the Robin costume looked great as well. You know, we're partners, you know, like by land or by sea, by air, you know, that's that's cool. You know, and they shake hands. Great stuff, you know, good old fashioned superhero stuff, you know. And then, you know, yeah, he, he's in, bat, uh, Robin's in the boat, Batman's in the bat wing. And I really like that scene where, Commissioner Gordon's like, you know, turn the sign off. He's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Batman flies through the the question mark, and he just goes. And then Commissioner Gordon's like, go, go. That's just a really cool moment. I thought that was a really cool moment. You know, and then, yeah, they're fighting, and boat's blowing up. You know, Two-Face and the Riddler are, are uh, you know, playing Battleship, and, you know, they blow up the Bat Boat and everything. Then they're fighting underwater. You know, holy rusted metal, Batman, huh? You know... Holy, like, the ground's full of holes? Oh, <laughs> you know, that I like that. And then uh, the Riddler, I like that suit he wears at the end. And, you know, it's like, all right, you know, now it's double jeopardy. It's the, you save the boy or you save the girl, you know. And, you know, I forget what the, the riddle is that Batman says, but the answer is you're as blind as a bat. Exactly. And he throws that batarang and it, and it hits the... Uh, that like that light thing and it comes down and it, it shows it's all really an illusion and bummer and you know the riddler hits that switch and it sets the uh the cages open and they fall down and you know doing that scene ah oh, you know and you know he saves the day and you know that final moment with two face you know where you know he flips the coin and then batman throws up all the coins and then he dies, but he before you know when he's dying, he catches the coin. You know, I thought that was kind of it's subtle, but it's kind of cool. And then, you know, Robin's like, okay, yeah, he's like he's dead. I understand, you know, he's, 
you're you're right, Bruce. It's not taking the pain away. I'm still pissed off. You know, and they'd lock up the Riddler at the end. I like that. I am Batman. <laughs> you know, I like that. Um, at the end. And then, you know, we have that great shot at the end where Batman's running and then Robin joins him and the movie ends. Like I said, there was a lot more scenes that they had cut out of the movie. Um, there was supposed to be a lot more in the beginning where Two-Face escapes from Arkham Asylum. Um, basically, there was a whole other subplot when Batman gets shot in the head. He loses his memory and he can't remember who he is. And he, he, goes, he falls into the cave where you know how in the movie he sees those visions of the giant bat. Yeah, he, they did this bat puppet. You know, he falls into that part of the cave, the bat cave, and the, he, like, touches the puppet, and he remembers who he is. It, it's, I don't know. It was a whole long scene they cut out. And there was there was another, the last shot of the movie, they extended, it was it was originally going to be extended. It was, Alfred was going to drive Nicole Kidman's character away. And she was like, does it ever end, Alfred? And he goes, not in this lifetime, my dear. And then there was going to be a shot of the bat signal, and you see Batman and Robin on the on this roof, and they like jump down like one, and then they run towards the camera, and the movie ends. It was going to be like a different like way that they ended it. But yeah, there was a lot of scenes that they cut out, which some of them are on the DVD, the two disc DVD that I have, but a lot of some of them still aren't out yet. But oh well. But anyway. I'm um, just wrapping this up. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Batman Forever. Once again, in my opinion, a, a very good sequel. I know that you know it's considered you know the turning point of the franchise, you know, but I I still enjoyed it. I still really enjoy it um, today. You know, I enjoyed it growing up. There's a lot of really good stuff in it. But anyway, you know, I hope you enjoyed this once again, and stay tuned when I talk about a movie that I do enjoy also. Um, Batman and Robin, which I, I do have problems with, but, you know, I still enjoy the movie. But anyway, uh, see you guys later. Peace.